Okay, so let's have a second and third case under modular arithmetic. Our second case here would be if there. If A is this time less than N and A is still a positive number. So our first case, if you could remember, if you were able to watch that video, um, our A here is still positive but greater than N. So our second case here would be A is still positive but this time less than N. So for an example, say we have 6 is congruent to what? Modulo, um, say, 12. There. Clearly, this leftmost number here, which is our A, is already less than this number. And this is also a positive number. Now, this is easy peasy, guys. If you're having this case, automatically you just have to copy and paste. Just copy letter A. Yeah. Although, as you go higher in math, guys, the answer here for B is um, infinite. We can have many possible numbers here. But again, for the sake of um, for the sake of understanding there on cryptography, we would just be considering positive number here, which is less than this number right here okay so if you're very you know curious about modular arithmetic what we can do about that then number theory is for you under pure mathematics okay so there let's check if that would abide to the definition of of um modular arithmetic it was noted in my video in the first case that when we subtract when we subtract b from a the answer must be divisible by n so clearly if we subtract 6 from 6 the answer is 0 and 0 divided by 12 is 0 we still don't have remainder so 6 here is still a correct answer okay so whenever you have smaller number there at the leftmost smaller number than the number at the rightmost part always the answer here will just be the same easy let's have the last case which is yeah case number three that is the time we're in um a is negative number and of course since uh, as we discussed in my previous video n here will always be positive so if a here is negative automatically a is less than n there you go. So our first case this time would be, what if A is negative and is of course less than N? Note that in my discussion with previous video that, in the pre previous video that, our A and B here can be or are integers. So they can be positive or negative integers and like with N, which would be strictly positive integers. So there is a possibility for us to have, say, um, negative 24 there and we are to do here say modulo um, 5 it's possible but then again um, in our class we would be considering here a positive number but is less than 5 here so how do we do that we just have to do the opposite of the first case remember in the first case, we were we were subtracting. Um, let's have. Excuse me, guys. Let me drag that one here first. Thank you. Okay. So, in the first case, we were we were subtracting. We are to subtract this number from this number, right? But then in case three, if you do the same thing, that is, if we keep on subtracting five from negative 24 clearly will be getting a negative number but then as i told you we are to consider a positive number here therefore opposite in that case one instead of us subtracting five in case three we are to add five yes so if we have negative 24 there we would be keep uh, we will be 
um, adding 5 repeatedly. So plus 5 equals, 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 equals until we find the first positive number there, which is 1. Why am I saying the first positive number? Because the first positive number there will always be yes positive number and is less than this. Because if you are to continue adding 5, that would be 6 and that would be this time greater than 5. There you go. So that's how you do case 3. If you are having a negative number here, don't subtract this number but add. So for example, if you have negative 28 and what if we do this time modulo um, 6, let's do that. Negative 28 plus 6 plus 6 equals equals equals. The answer there is 2. Let's check if our answers here are really correct. By definition, if we subtract this number here from this number, the answer must be divisible by this number. Let's check. Negative 24 minus 1 is negative 25. Clearly, when we divide that by 5, we'll get here an integer, negative 5. We don't have um, we don't have residue. Our answer here is not a decimal. So same thing with the second example here in case 3. That's negative 28 minus 2. The answer is negative 30. And clearly, that is divisible by 6. There you go, guys. So this is how we do modular arithmetic. That's actually one of the reasons why um, we had congruent to zero in our UPC, credit or debit cards, ISBN, ISSN, because if we have something like, um, say, 10, 10 congruent to something modulo 5 is actually 0, right? Because if we keep on subtracting 5 from 10, we won't have any remainders because this number here is already divisible by this number. So our answer here is 0. So I hope you got now the reason why um, in UPC and, I, and in credit or debit card, ISBN, ISSN, whenever we have zero here, I would always tell you that in layman's explanation, it means that this number here is divisible by this number right here. Okay, so if we have um, 25 say modulo 5 and 25 is divisible by 5 automatically the residue here is 0 okay so i hope you got the gist of this topic guys just in case it's still not clear for you you know what to do please comment all right comment down below and i'd be replying to your queries see you in my next videos guys thank you